You've been uh, sitting for a long time, and uh, thank you for your attention to all of the research findings. This is the interactive part of the program. So I'm going to ask you to evaluate a teacher in a minute, so have your pencils ready. Um, what I'm going to talk about a little bit is the set of strategies for measuring and developing teacher effectiveness that uh, go beyond the use of uh, test scores, which we've heard a lot about in the last couple of presentations. Uh, we started this, and Jack uh, Jennings launched the program with the reality that teacher evaluation has long been a problem. Uh, in a report issued last year by the Accomplished California Teacher Group, uh, Jane Fung, who was a National Board Certified Teacher and a Milken Award winner, uh, described her experience as follows. I've had ad administrators who never came into my classroom for formal observations or asked me for anything more than an initial planning or goal sheet. I've had administrators observe a formal lesson and put the feedback sheet in my box without ever having spoken to me about a lesson. And I've had years where I'm just asked to sign the end of the year evaluation sheet without being observed. Uh, so those kinds of stories come from teachers frequently. We know that you know, changes need to be made. There are some places that have been doing more productive teacher evaluation over the years, but this has been a long-standing problem. Um, I was involved in a study with uh, my colleague Art Wise at the RAND Corporation 20 some years ago uh, looking at for teacher evaluation systems that were effective. And we scoured the whole country before we found four programs that we could study uh, that actually were able to make personnel decisions and help teachers improve. And that has changed some, uh, but there's still uh, quite a lot of work to be done out there. If we think about what our goals would be for effective teacher evaluation systems, we would want to measure good teaching accurately. And we've seen that um, the value-added measures that are currently uh, being uh, tried um, have some real problems with accuracy. Uh, we would want to create an integrated understanding of what teachers do and what their students learn that takes context into account so that we could use some evidence of student learning in a way that is connected to what teachers are actually doing in their practice and the context within which they're doing it. And that ought to be possible to do, to build integrated systems. We would want to enable school leaders, mentors and coaches, and teachers themselves to become skilled in examining and supporting teaching. So there's a learning process that actually happens as a result of the evaluation. We would want to provide information for improvement of practice through feedback and professional development uh, so that at the end of the day, uh, we know that teaching is improving. And we would want to enable timely personnel decisions that can happen without years and years of uh, litigation and other things that do prevent uh, the termination of teachers who should be uh, out of the classroom if they cannot improve. So how do we evaluate teaching? This is your opportunity. Uh, and many of you know this teacher. This is um, Ferris Bueller's high school history teacher. Um, and I want you to think about uh, how you would evaluate this teacher and what you would look for. Okay, here we go. And so did the kids. <laughs> so I know this isn't quite fair, but uh, very quickly, um, I'd like to know uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how many of you gave uh, Ferris Bueller's high school history teacher a rating, 1 being the worst and 10 being the highest, a rating of uh, 5 or above? OK, anyone? Anyone? Uh, a rating of 4 or below? A rating of two or below? OK. <laughs> All right, what are the factors you're looking for? Very quickly, you don't have a lot of time. What would you want to look for in evaluating a teacher? Yes. Interaction with students, some, th some kind of engagement. Yes. OK, what else? OK, present ability to present the information in a productive way, yes? 
Evidence of student learning, okay. Yes. Enthusiasm, okay. Yeah. Be able to relate to the students. Yeah. Calling students by name, some indication that he even knows who's in the room, that would might be good. Okay. So we could, we could go on and on, and in fact, we do have a lot of evidence about uh, what uh, effective teachers do. And if I had time, I would show you, uh, you know, an effective teacher. Uh, this is a, a terrific teacher uh, who teaches in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, she's a national board certified teacher who exemplifies all the features that you might want to, to look at. But we have research that's gone on for many, many years uh, about what kinds of teaching practices, in fact, using very uh, a wide array of measures of learning, contribute to gains in student learning. And we find uh, pretty consistently that teachers who promote gains in student learning um, understand their subject matter deeply and they can use it flexibly. They can connect what the students know to what uh, the, they know. They engage students in active learning. That's the first thing that you all mentioned. They create intellectually ambitious tasks that actually represent the way that you would use the knowledge outside the classroom. They use well-chosen teaching strategies and they know when to use which strategies for which purposes. They assess students' learning continuously and they adapt teaching to student needs. We have a lot of new evidence on the use of formative assessment and the large gains in student learning that can come about when teachers know and use those assessment techniques. They create effective scaffolds and supports to help students get from where they are in their understanding to where they need to be. And we know a lot about what those look like and what teachers do when they're implementing them. They provide clear standards, constant feedback. Feedback turns out to be enormously important in the learning process and opportunities for students to revise their work in response to that feedback. And they effectively manage a collaborative classroom in which all students really have a sense that they belong, that they have men uh, membership, and they use that for learning. And so there's literally you know, mountains and mountains of studies that, that deal with these traits of effective teaching. And these qualities have been embedded in standards for teaching. The first standards uh, that really worked to bring the research base uh, forward were the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards that were developed um, beginning after 1987. And the board, as many of you know, has a portfolio based on those standards that's used to certify accomplished teaching. Uh, another group, the Interstate New Teacher Assessment and Support Consortium, a group of states, uh, translated those standards into standards for beginning teachers, which are used uh, in more than 40 states. They are the basis of new licensing assessments, and they're recently revised to reflect the Common Core standards. And then there are uh, many teacher evaluation instruments used in districts that are standards-based, that take these standards and try to uh, put them into a tool that allows you to look at teaching intelligently uh, against some things that really matter. Not like the old days when I was teaching, when you had things like, were your bulletin boards neat? You know, did you write the objective on the board? Things that might make the classroom look tidy, but may not actually uh, result in greater learning. Uh, we, uh, in these standards-based evaluations, typically you see structured observations of teaching that are based on those standards, along with other evidence of practice, lesson plans, student work, and other things that let you know what the teacher's doing. Uh, we find that they do offer stable evidence over time, unlike the value-added metrics that bounce around from year to year. You typically get a much more stable representation of the teacher's uh, effectiveness. They are related, as we found in some other studies, to student learning gains. And this is an approach to uh, the use of value-added models in larger scale studies that has uh, allowed us to validate some measures. And they help teachers become more effective when they're used as a source of continuous feedback. Some studies of districts that use metrics like this in evaluation find that not only do they reflect teachers' value-added um, contributions, but they also increase teachers' effectiveness. We have examples across the country of evaluation systems in places like Cincinnati, Denver, Rochester, New Mexico has a 
tiered system, Vaughan Charter School and other charter schools, as well as places like Singapore, the Netherlands, and elsewhere that use these kinds of standards-based evaluation tools. Some of you know the Teacher Advancement Program, which is used in a number of states and districts, which borrowed from those standards and put it into a tool. Uh, and furthermore, trains evaluators for four days before they're in the classroom, uh, has continuous feedback for uh, teachers and so on. Uh, and a number of these uh, systems uh, have incorporated evidence of student learning drawn from classroom work as well as classroom school and district assessments, but they've done so in an integrated fashion. They've said, what are you doing? Who are you teaching? What is a range of evidence about the outcomes? And how can we combine those? As we would do in uh, medicine, in evaluating a physician's practice, uh, we would look at outcomes, we would look at who the patients were, we'd look at the um, meeting professional standards of practice together as a way of evaluating. Uh, successful systems develop evaluation expertise. It, we found um, through a, a range of studies that it's not enough simply to have an instrument. You need to train evaluators so they know what they're looking for. Uh, you need to release and fund expert mentors to offer assistance and districts that do that so that beginners and teachers who need additional help can get it are able to make better personnel decisions. Uh, in some uh, districts that have created peer assistance and review systems, uh, they've created evaluation panels and processes uh, in which these uh, panels make decisions about tenure and continuation. They're able uh, both to make good decisions and to dismiss teachers who do not improve without lawsuits, without uh, dragging out the time uh, to, to make the decision that is needed uh, uh, to move teachers uh, out as well. Other measures of effective teaching are being developed and tested. Uh, the Gates Foundation has this Measures of Effective Teaching Project, which is really um, based on the idea that we can validate measures of teacher evaluation against measures of student learning growth for larger samples, and this is where it differs from applying it to individual teacher evaluation, for larger samples of teachers and students, and look at whether, in fact, uh, certain uh, indicators of teaching uh, predict teachers' uh, value-added uh, gains on a large scale. They've done a video analyses of teaching uh, that are similar to the standards-based approaches I described earlier, student evaluations of teachers, which have turned out to be uh, fairly predictive and uh, reliable. We actually have some evidence about student evaluations going back 30 or 40 years, that they can be, when they're um, well-designed, reliable uh, data about teachers. Uh, assessments of pedagogical content knowledge. There's also a teacher performance assessment consortium that has uh, developed, uh, is using performance assessments developed in uh, states like California and piloting that for beginning teachers in 20 states. So we have a variety of tools um, and some states are looking to use those kinds of tools in a tiered way so that they're able to assess very systematically teachers when they enter the field, uh, when they move to a professional license or gain tenure, and when they move to an advanced license or certification or become a master teacher or a lead teacher. Now these assessments are of interest because uh, we believe that teaching can be improved if we create means for examining teaching that are related to effectiveness, and if we can develop systems that are reliable, consistent, and powerful in shaping preparation, professional development, and practice. We don't want teachers looking at the results of evaluation saying, I, this makes no sense to me. I don't know how it has a link to what I'm doing. We want systems where teachers can say, if I do X and develop my practice in the following ways, I'll improve and my students will learn more. And we want to have robust measures for high stakes decisions. We need to be able to make better decisions at licensure, at tenure, uh, when we're deciding about continuation and when we're deciding about advancement. Uh, I mentioned that some of these tools have been examined for what we call predictive validity. Uh, do they predict what teachers' uh, contributions to student learning will be? Uh, National Board Certification has a large body of studies. Many studies have found uh, that board certification predicts teacher effectiveness. The National Research Council concluded that teachers with this credential are more effective than other teachers at raising their students' test scores. 
The Connecticut Best Portfolio was another version of a performance-based approach uh, for beginning teachers. Uh, it was found to strongly predict student learning gains, uh, to significantly uh, 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 predict which teachers would raise English language arts scores. And interestingly, the Praxis 1 and 2 tests, the college that the teacher attended there, GPA in college, had no effect on predicting teachers' effectiveness. The California PACT assessment, another performance assessment for beginning teachers, has shown a significant relationship between scores and student learning gains. And a teacher who scores at the top of that measure uh, has a 20 percentile point difference in student ach achievement as compared to one who scores at the bottom. But again, when we have these larger samples, uh, we are able to draw more stable conclusions. What do these performance assessments do? They use teaching plans, videotapes, teachers' assignments, scored student work, commentaries to understand what teachers are doing and why. They look at teachers' plans for the group as a whole and for individual students, how do they work with English learners? How do they work with special education students? They look at teaching and learning as they unfold. Uh, they focus on student learning in many ways, often including student learning evidence in the body of evidence in the portfolio, and they score it reliably and consistently. Uh, one of the other potential benefits of beginning to use these kinds of systematic approaches to teacher evaluation is that they actually improve candidate learning. Many of you, how many of you have been involved with national board certification in one way or another over many years? So a number of folks in the audience have probably heard teachers say it was the best professional development that I ever engaged in. I learned so much. I'm a different teacher now than I was before. We're also finding that kind of effect for teachers, beginning teachers, who are uh, exposed to these kinds of standards-based performance assessments of teaching. Uh, one beginning teacher uh, put it this way after they completed uh, a performance assessment. I think for me the most valuable thing was the sequencing of the lessons, teaching the lesson, evaluating what the kids were getting, what they weren't getting, having that be re reflected in my next lesson, the teach, assess, teach, assess, teach, assess process. Uh, you're constantly changing based on what the children learned. That's what we want teachers to be able to do as professionals that many teachers never learned to do. Uh, but, but we now know can be learned uh, even by beginning teachers when they're put in a situation where they're asked to demonstrate that skill. Uh, these kinds of assessments also can provide feedback to teacher uh, educators, to teacher evaluators, uh, to uh, cooperating teachers and others uh, who will say things like, in any of these uh, instances, the scoring experiences force me to revisit what matters in assessing teachers, what matters in preparing teachers, uh, as a cooperating teacher said, it forces you to be clear about good teaching, what it looks like, what it sounds like, to look at your own practice critically with new eyes. Again, a learning process that extends both to the person being evaluated and to the people doing the evaluating. So that at the end of the day, there's a common shared vision of what good teaching can be uh, that motivates the process of evaluation. So in, in closing, uh, teacher evaluation systems that support student and teacher learning uh, should include evidence that illuminates standards-based practices that are related to effectiveness. We should continue to try to validate uh, what we use as measures in terms of how they are related to teacher effectiveness. They ought to have an integrated set of measures that show both what teachers do and what happens in student learning as a result. Uh, and, try to, and try to develop ways to integrate that information in a productive way. And they should have systems that support evaluation expertise uh, and well-grounded decisions uh, for both teachers and for the system as a whole. Thank you. Well, we've had an extraordinary experience of four university professors making all their presentations within one hour. And so I'd like to thank the panel very much. You've given us a lot to think about.